and I did want you to take us back, you know, for, for the YouTube audience, for Fanatics View fans, to, um, well, I guess, firstly, take us through fourth and long, because we, we, you know, we had the off-camera conversation about it. Tell, tell us, what, what are some stories around that that, that the people might not know, and, 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 um, and just how, you know, your, your launch into, into the Cowboys? Well, uh, fourth and long almost didn't happen. We were having, we were having sponsorship issues. There wasn't enough money from sponsorships. Um, and, and then they found some. I don't know if it was like Popeyes or Miller Lite or whoever it was. And I want to say it was Miller Lite because that was an association with Jerry Jones um, that came in and, 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 gave, and gave some money for us to actually make it happen. Uh, Jerry was really instrumental behind that because of his team. Was, and, he lo- and he loves Michael, he loves Michael Irvin. But that didn't almost happen. Um, that was a that was a very interesting interesting show. Funny thing about Fourth and Long. After I won Fourth and Long, um, I didn't get a playbook until I got to training camp. So think about that. The first time I ever saw a playbook was when I got to San Antonio. And if you know anything about this, this is back when they didn't have 90 men in training camp. They had 80, and you had to cut guys every single week. So. You know, God bless the dead. Coach Joe Avizano, he and I would sneak into Valley Ranch uh, when it was over in Irving. We would sneak into the film room because they record. They always recorded all of the meetings, so we would sneak into the to the to the film room, uh, and we would watch all the meetings. And I would write handwrite everything that I saw in there, and I would watch film um, about it. And so that's how I got a, a sense of what they were doing offensively. But I never got a playbook for the Cowboys' offense until I got in training camp. And 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 and, Jason, Coach Garrett wanted to cut me after the first week. They had to release a guy in order to get me on the roster. I was the 80th man, so they had to honor the obligation to get me into training camp. So they had they had to cut a wide receiver that they had actually liked from Oklahoma. Um, and the the goal was, who that, who that was? Uh, it was last name Wilson. I forget his name. Uh, uh something Wilson. Um, and uh, and so they were going to cut me after a week. That was the plan. Cut me after a week, bring bring the kid Wilson back, and go on about their business. But Wade Phillips and, and at the time Ray Sherman was my wide receiver coach. And shout out to my guy Joe D. Camillus. Thank you, Joe D. Camillus. They saw something in me. They was like, nah, this kid got skills. Give him another week. Give him another week. Give him another week. And and so one week from being supposed to being cut to gradually going, and then I, I made I made the practice squad roster that year after being out of football for almost two years. But, you know, fourth and long was a great thing. You know, there won't be another season, thanks to the NFL. They don't, they don't, they don't want it to happen unless they do it. But shout out to my guy, Mike, for, uh, for that vision and for that dream and for giving me an opportunity. Is, is it still surreal to look back on it? Yeah, yeah. I still, I still go back every now and again. I watch the episodes. I remember where I was at in that time of my life. I was, I was poor. I was literally homeless. Like, I was living in a friend's futon uh, in, her, in her back room. Like a friend of my family, I call like my aunt. I, I had nothing. I had no money. I, you know, I had no money. I was a security guard, like a mall cop, flashlight cop, um, and I worked at T-Mobile. And I didn't have any money. I, when I say I didn't have any money, I was broke. I was broke. Like, like I remember, like having like thirty dollars in my account. That like, was broke, broke. Not rich, broke. Real people broke. <laughs> like that's a difference between being rich, broke. Like oh, he's rich. I'm broke. What do you mean you broke? Oh, I only got ten million dollars left. No, no, no. I had ten dollars. That was it. And and so. Um, one of the conversations that I had with my brother before I left, my oldest brother, and I told him I needed to borrow a thousand dollars. He said, "I don't have a thousand dollars." And I said, "Get it how you can." Like, I need a because I was like, I don't want to get too far behind in my bills because I was already behind in my bills. So he he he, he took he took uh, money out of his four hundred one k and gave me a thousand dollars. And I told him the conversation that I had with him. I said, "I won't lose." I said, "I will pay you back when I'm done with this show." I said, "I'm not gonna lose," and. That's the, that's the mindset I went into the show. And I figured whatever they do to me can't be worse than me going to be a security guard another night. So 